Wow, talk about irony. Well, although and not everybody will understand that irony, but the, it's the fairy tale, 2014's episode 71. It's an enemy filler with, a, or maybe a side story on what happened with the, uh, with Jalal and Orashian says gang. Although some of them wants to follow Jalal, and other ones choose not to. But Jalal doesn't force them, well, technically not to. But then they meet up with a old foe, Rusty Rose, who has become really a big bum. Having been traumatized by losing his friends, uh, his guild destroyed by fairy tale, and even by seeing the true horror of Tartarus. He mentions the Baliam Alliance that it was a non-aggressive pact. However, it was pretty clear that Tartarus broke that pact, seeing that they never really considered any of the other guilds as allies, since they were humans to begin with. This was mostly seen by the way they eliminated the uh, dark guilds that were supposed to be under Russian, no, not only under Russian says, but also under Grimor Hato. That shows um, their cruelty. So Rusty Rose, in an anger, confronted the Tartarus by using illusions of his old two comrades, uh, Azuma and... Uh, of course I forget what his name is. The old fire god guy. However, uh, Kyoka saw through that and by using her sense of pain, uh, curse, tortured... Uh, Rusty Rose and said that they were nothing more than insect and they would never ever be allied with him again. It is also apparent that Rusty Rose saw someone behind Kyokia, someone who is the true mastermind of all this, which we should know is more than just end. Either way, uh, the Russian says still cannot really decide if they want to follow Jalal, but uh, they begin to call each other by real names at least. As Jalal uh, and Meredy walks in the forest, Jalal says that since he was practically brainwashed and doing that tower, he is partially to blame for the Russian says misery. He mentions their prayers are what created their powerful magic, seeing that Richard's dream was to meet his brother. Prayer was to meet his brother. Al although it's, I have to say, Richard's dream uh, prayer is the only one that makes sense. Uh, Solano's dream was to fade into the sky like an angel and, and lift, leave this earth. Why did she want to do that? Because she considered the world cruel? Eric wanted to share an unbelievable story with a friend, meaning that he wanted to hear the voice of a friend who could not talk, Kubelios, aka, you know, she, Kala, Kana. And um, Sawyer wanted to be faster than anything else. In the world, so probably he could run away from every from anything that was threatening to him. And Macbeth wanted to sleep in a quiet place. Either way, then they are attacked by Rusty Rose again, who still is hanging on to the past. He begs Meredith to join with him again, but Meredith says he can't. As uh, Rusty Rose is consumed in grief uh, and seemingly attacked Jalal, the a Russian says come back and knock out Rusty Rose, and Jalal's eyes are finally healed, meaning that he did not crush them, he merely wounded them. Uh, as the, uh, it is this moment that a Russian says decides to follow Jalal with Sundere actions that, well, we need to spill our times. Jalal says their sins will have to be washed away with, with this. We are then switched back to the Tartarus gang, who are meeting up with the Mira. Uh, who are struggling against Celia's ethereal form. And finally we see the true mastermind, Mara de Gre, the underworld king, who sits on a throne, probably very likely the, the sub-guild master of Tartarus, seeing that he holds the Book of End. And here is the irony, the one I saw in the very beginning. Do you know who voices him? Well, in t TV Tropes, I read that uh, Naruku, no, no, Mara de Gre may have some expi uh, similarities to Naraku, and it's Naraku's voice actor who voices him. <laughs> That's the irony. 
<laughs> it's almost like a casting gag in my book. But it doesn't matter. I'll, I think I'm the only one who gets that. So that's basically this episode. Although a filler, at the beginning I did not understand it, but it made finally sense when it seemed that Rusty Rose created illusions of his old comrades, who were the only two that died. So yeah, this was a little bit more of the emotional side, although it may not really have hit completely in there. It still felt okay. But we're back on the main story next week, I think. Give me your thoughts if you have any.